Welcome back. Next, we're going to take a look at Food Fight. Food Fight! Smack! Okay, General Computer Corporation created the whimsical action game Food Fight in which the player flings tomatoes, bananas, and other foodstuffs at angry chefs as part of a legal settlement with Atari over GCC's unlicensed uh, copy of Missile Command. That's right, this game was how they settled their legal dispute. Ha 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 ha. Just the way the text was positioned for a, a brief second there, it looked like, well, you get the idea. So, this uh, attract screen looks rather Pac-Man-esque. Here they introduced the four uh, varieties of enemies, each with a unique name. You know, because uh, Pac-Man would do the thing with Inky, Blinky, Pinky, and Sue. And Atari wanted to do that as well. So yeah, uh, not too bad here. Evil chefs definitely are a, a recurring theme in Vidya, aren't they? You had the ones in uh, GTA 3, and on a much less well-known note, there was the evil chef in uh, Killing Time on the 3DO. That artwork they did for him is just so utterly visceral, what with all the knives sticking out of him. I tell you, if Killing Time was 10% as inspired as its box art was, they really would have had a hit on their hands. But no, it was just some crappy shooter for the 3DO that ran at 15 FPS. Nothing in there was anywhere near as memorable as that box art. Well, I guess they did have that song at the end. That was a, another good part of it. Man, we're just really sucking at this, aren't we? Anyway, so when this one came out in the arcades back in the day, it was the first game to ever, ever have instant replays. Although you won't see any of them here because I don't know how to trigger them. But when you do especially well in a round, they'll show you everything you just did with this obnoxious music that goes Yes, indeed. So the watermelons act differently in that they don't uh, go away when you walk on them. So you can throw a lot more that way. I don't know what what it looks like inside Nikocado Avocado's head, but I'd like to imagine that it's probably like this. He dreams of scenarios like this where uh, he's surrounded by chefs and they're just hurling food at him. And uh, here's the flyer, by the way. That guy on the bottom left, there's too many lines on his face, you can't distinguish anything. It just looks like a huddled mass of flesh. Very unusual. Okay, um, next up, where was it? Would you believe... Come on. Would you believe that Atari made their very own version of Mario Kart? This feels like the type of game you would see if, like, you went to the house of that one weird kid at your school who talks funny and he says, Yes, I have Mario Kart. And, and then you go there and, well, this isn't quite Mario Kart. You know the kid I'm talking about, the kid who would always make up weird lies about video games to impress everybody. This is the closest thing to Mario Kart he ever had. Okay, so we've got Regis. Who wants to be a millionaire? We got Scully. We got Polpito. I think he's from an Atari game called Dive. Don't know who that is. We got Bentley Bear from uh, Crystal Castles. I don't know where Volky is from. And of course, who could forget Patarmigan? We'll be Bentley Bear since he's the most balanced. All right, so we've got the Borgers Cup, the Carlton Cup, the Tempest Cup, and the Miracle Race. Only one out of the four of these is named after or in an Atari game. I don't rightly understand the theme. So, in a technical sense, this is marginally better than Mario Kart on SNES. 
The scrolling is being done with the actual sprite scaling and not just fake sprite scaling like you would see with the SNES Mode 7. I'm gonna go ahead and turn down the sound of the engines for the sake of you, the audience, because that would, that would get very grating. For those of you out there listening to this with headphones, you may have noticed that the music in this is a little funny. It's very much split into two channels, that is a left channel and a right channel. But half the song is in one ear and half the song is in the other. And that's not something I did, by the way. Truthfully, I don't know who did that, if Digital Eclipse did that when they wrote this emulator, or if the original game on Atari was like that. But either way, that is highly unusual. You know, I probably could have done normal difficulty instead of easy. I really seem to be cleaning up this race. Did you see the Atari symbol up on the top of the screen with, on the, uh, the lap counter? That's good attention to detail. Oh, and if you go off the course, it's actually very difficult to get unstuck. It's like being in quicksand. We gotta consult that one YouTube channel, Quicksand Scenes. That's a real thing, by the way. There's a guy out there, and his whole channel is just compiling a... A scenes in TV and movies where there's quicksand. Okay, on to the next one. We're going to the Swiss Alps. You ever see that story in the news about that pilot who got depressed and he, uh, he crashed the plane into the Swiss Alps with all the passengers on board? Isn't this supposed to be a comedy show? Why would he say that? Anyway, so this is exactly as difficult to do as it looks. Just because of the, the limited uh, draw distance, let's say, it's kind of difficult to tell what, where the uh, turns are. But I'm doing okay. Speaking of draw distance, I was once playing a uh, Sonic R. It was on the, uh, the that Sonic collection they made for the GameCube. I don't remember the exact name of it. And I was playing it via Nintendon't, which is a, you know, a homebrew loader for the Wii. And th there was a bug in the game that made the draw distance even worse than it was. But I had never even played the game before, so I assumed that was just natural. I assumed it could only render what was six feet in front of you, and you could just see the whole track just kind of culling right in front of you. But no, it wasn't that bad. Just kind of an odd way to experience something for the first time. But yeah, Nintendon't is a very good tool. If you've still got a working Nintendo Wii, that would uh, be a good thing to do with it. And play all the fancy GameCube games on the home console. Here's the weirdly depressing music again. You gotta wonder what happened behind the scenes. If they just told the guy, just put any old music on there, because the... There really doesn't seem to be a sense of theming for how the music should go with the game. I mean, just listen to this for 10 seconds. Does this sound like farm music? Not even remotely. You just gotta wonder what happened here. You gotta wonder. I was stopping in the middle of the track for the sake of making this uh, a bit more entertaining. Let the AI catch up and then we could have an actual race. Try to play the game outside of the bounds of what was intended. Back in my younger days I used to do things like that a lot more often. Because you know, you just get bored with the regular game. You'd try to go through the courses backwards on Mario Kart and that sort of thing. You invent your own video game. 
I gotta start doing that again soon. Well, I don't know why I said soon. I could do it at any time, but... Still, you know, make your own fun. You know, just looking at this, I think this really adds to the uh, the case that in just about any era of gaming, the, the Japanese were always making the best stuff. 80s, 90s, 2000s, today. I left off the 70s because the Japanese weren't really around back then. But yeah, that's a bit of a controversial opinion, but... Honestly, it just seems like American or even European made games are just kind of lacking in the... Uh, well-designed levels and iconic characters and memorable tunes. You know, well anyway, that's enough uh, Atari carts. I, I think you get the idea. Not the best racing game ever, but you could certainly do worse in uh, racing games from this era.